everybody. I'm shocked to see so many of you here. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shalt save me. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee and through the rivers they shall not o'erflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Wayne and I were both raised in Shemokin, which is 65 miles north of Harrisburg. At age 11, three significant things happened to me. We were enjoying a family picnic walking along a mountain road, and I was holding my two-year-old brother's hand when he suddenly pulled away and started running. A truck came around a curve and hit him, and he died on the way to the hospital. There was no grief counseling then. Loss was a part of life, and we were supposed to stoically push through it. It was a tragic time in our family, but I remember my Grammy said, God doesn't make any mistakes. About that, that time, a neighbor gave us a piano, and of the four remaining children, I was the only one who wanted to study piano. Then, at a rally day service, I was under conviction and accepted the Lord as, of, as my Savior. I don't remember the exact order of these three events, but for the next seven years, I believed I was responsible for, for my brother's death. One night, a pastor asked me if I ever felt guilty for my brother's death. Oh, yes, I said. I have always felt responsible. Then he explained that God sometimes allows very hard things to happen to us, but he does not cause them. He told me about the sovereignty of God, and a huge burden was lifted from my shoulders. Then in 1990, my oldest brother took his own life, so I lost two of my brothers tragically. I'm going to tell you a little about of, uh, the way I arrange my piano numbers. These are all my piano numbers except um, Oh Say But I'm Glad, which is at the very end of the program. You'll hear uh, all of my own arrangements tonight, and I always arrange from the words of the song. The next song is in the minor key for the first verse because it is well with my soul. H.G. Spafford lost five of his children, an infant son, and then four of his daughters, tragically. The third verse talks about my sin, oh, the blessed bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. And then the, the fourth verse talks about heaven, O oh Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight. And I think you're going to hear the difference in these three verses, and I, I always do that. I always arrange my songs from the words of the song. And then the next one will be, Be Still My Soul. <laughs> Thank you. 
John for I'm sorry. John 14, 1 to 6 says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. My mother and dad were saved and devoted their whole lives to caring for us. I learned to clean and iron, uh, can fruits and vegetables, and learned to work hard and care for a home. Wayne and I met in first grade. I went to a skating party with him in fourth grade. That was our, he considers that our first date. <laughs> But we didn't really start to date until 12th grade. Then he joined the Navy, and I went to college in Philadelphia. Finally, he was stationed in Maine, and on Friday, he'd hitchhike from, to Philadelphia from Maine, get me at school, and we'd take the train to Shimokan to be with our parents. Then Sunday morning, we'd reverse that, and he would hitchhike back to Maine, and that was 431 miles. And in those days, anybody would pick up a serviceman who was in uniform, so he never had trouble getting back. We married in 1955 and lived in a 33-foot trailer on a naval air base in Maine. We now have three sons, three daughters-in-law, six grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren. And we have been married 65 years. So you can probably figure... <laughs> People sometimes ask me, how, did you, how do you manage that 65 years? Well, with a lot of forgiveness, never holding a grudge. And my parents and my grandparents taught me that. It was drummed into me from the time I was little, don't hold a grudge, and always forgive. So I have tried to do that.
John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life.
I taught music for 21 years, directed two choirs, played for the services and special music at Calvary Baptist for 54 years. And we had been in the same home for 55 years and volunteered at Doc Woods, playing for their morning services just once a month. So we knew if we ever moved, we wanted to move there. Six years ago, Wayne put our names in for an apartment, and in October 2019, we got a call saying they had an apartment for us. So we prayed for the Lord's wisdom as we had been right along. One by one, the Lord showed us this was his will. We sold our home in five days, a second car to our mechanic, and many other things too numerous to mention. We went from nine rooms and two baths to three rooms and one bath, which I thought might be impossible, but it isn't. <laughs> we are perfectly happy. We were able to pick our own kitchen cabinets, counters, rugs, colors of the walls, vanity in the bathroom, and all of the appliances were brand new, so the whole thing was brand new when we moved in. What can be better than that? So we moved in on January 6, 2020. And at 87 years of age, I can say Jesus led me all the way. I am so grateful for all that God has done for me and that he has just taken us step by step. When we didn't know which way to go, we just asked for his wisdom. And he said, if we ask, he'll give to all men liberally. So he has done that for us. In Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And in 6.23, it says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And ladies, my burden tonight is, if there's anyone here who has never trusted Christ as their Savior, that you might do that tonight. You could begin a wonderful life, not an easy life. God doesn't promise us that, but he promises to be with us all the way, as he has done for me. And I would not have ever wanted to live my life without the Lord. From the time I was 11, he has just guided the whole way. And I believe in my heart that the music has just saved me. It has saved my sanity, I think, because I just filled my life with godly music. And I started working hard at the piano. And I, I still do. I still am arranging that uh, Rock of Ages. That was, that's the last one. That's not exactly as it should be yet. But anyway, it's a work in progress. And I'm always doing something new on the piano. And I just thank the Lord for that. He has been so gracious and good to us as a family. And to bring us here to this wonderful church, we are just praising him every day. And I'm going to play Oh Say But I'm Glad. Uh, this is the one song that is not my own arrangement, but I love it. It's such a happy song. And uh, I'm going to do that for you now. Follow the words on the screen because it, the words are wonderful.
Thank you, thank you, Roma. My heart is so full. Wow, the power of scripture in hymns. I'm sure all of you could say, that was my favorite, and then you go to the next one, that was my favorite. <laughs> but she did play my favorite tonight, Be Still My Soul. Thank you, thank you so much. That was absolutely beautiful. If you are here tonight, there's one song that Roma played that I want to invite you to think about if you have never asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be your personal savior. And the line in the song was, there's room at the cross for you. If you have never accepted the Lord as your personal savior, would you please, please come see me after? And we'll have other pastor's wives at the back doors grab any of us and just say, can you tell me more about knowing Jesus as your savior? We would love, love to explain it to you, and I know Roma would as well. So please um, talk to any of us. Thank you so much for coming tonight. I know your presence was an encouragement to Roma, and your words and your music were an encouragement to us. My heart is so full. Thank you, thank you. So have a blessed week. Stay safe in the snow tomorrow. Because of the snow, the uh, mom's meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow evening, the tea, that will be canceled, postponed. So um, just those of you that that applies to. And then on March the 4th, we have our Chocolate and Chuckles Ladies Night. So make sure 7 o'clock, 6.30 the doors are open, 7 o'clock the program starts. It's just going to be a fun, fun night for all of us ladies to enjoy together. So God bless you. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you Sunday.